This standard is going to be about the relative age of fossils. It is standard 5.5. It will be done on a mint green sheet of paper. So the first thing that we need to know is what is a fossil? Fossils are remains or physical evidence. So when we talk about physical evidence, this could include the animal tracks that we find of an animal, um, except these are going to be fossilized. Um, it could also be a burrow in which the organism is living in. Um, and it could also be something called coprolite, which is basically fossilized animal dung. Um, so we're looking at remains or physical evidence of an organism. that is preserved in many different ways uh, but most commonly in sedimentary rock. Okay, um, So there's the definition of a fossil. If you look over at the picture there are five main types of fossils um, petrified fossils, molds and casts, which we will be doing a lab on this week about why you're bringing your Play-Doh by Friday, please. Um, your carbon films, trace fossils, and preserved remains. Those are typically can be found in amber, uh, as well as frozen types of fossils and ice and stuff. But most importantly, what fossil shows us, I want you to write this out next to the question uh, of what do fossils show us. Fossils equals clues. Okay, in all caps, uh, because that is exactly what they do. They tell us about our past history that we haven't been here to see. So the first thing that we're going to look at is it is basically a rough sketch. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see that text box there. It is a rough sketch of the history of life on Earth. Okay. First and foremost, that is the biggest clue that we have about what used to be here. It also is going to allow scientists to see how organisms, as well as their environments, change over time. Let me make that bigger so you can see that as well. Okay, there is a special kind of fossil called an index fossil. And basically it's used just like we would use an index to figure out where we're looking um, in a book for a specific term, whatever that may be. So what we're looking for here is using this fossil to actually date rock layers. So if we know the age of the fossil, then we can basically figure out the age of the rock layers above it and the rock layers below it because we're going to talk about that idea of relative dating here in just a second. So these are fossils used to date rock layers. Um, basically we're looking at an organism that lived for a relatively, we're going to say short here, but what our short is is very different from the short that they're talking about because uh, when we're talking about geological time, that short period of time could be, um, you know, millions of years since the Earth is supposedly 4.6 billion years old. So we're saying a relatively short period of time. These are found in rock layers around the world. So it is not just one found here and there. It is typically routinely found in the same rock layer all around. I have shown you a picture here to the left of a trilobite. There are many different types of index fossils and this is only one of the many. And so if we know that this trilobite lived uh, around 400 million years ago, then we can basically age the rock layer that it's in and say it's also about 400 million years ago. So that's the way that you would actually use an index fossil. The next term that we need to know is what a geological column is. So if you look at the picture that I have provided there, you see three different rock sequences, A, B, and C. Each one of those are from different locations on the Earth. Um, a could be from Africa, B could be from the United States, and C could be from South America. 
what scientists have done with a geological column is figured out where there are similarities in those rock layers, as you can see in the picture, um, how the different patterns exist. And then they make this one individual column. If you look in that picture, it's a far right column. That's considered to be a geological column. This really doesn't exist any, on any one continent on the Earth. So when we talk about a geological column, this is what I want you to write down. Ideally, if all the rock layers existed on any one continent, this is what it would look like. So I, it's an ideally ordered arrangement of rock layers based on the relative ages of rocks. So there's that term that we need to understand. What does relative age mean? Play a mountain. And so that's what our next term basically is going to begin to help us better understand what this relative age means. So when we look at our next term, law of superposition, we see five different rock layers here. Um, and basically what this idea says is that in layers of sedimentary rock, the layers at the bottom of the, I'm going to put this in quotes, of the stack are older than the layers at the top. So basically when you look at this, you imagine um, a river flowing down, you know, flowing down towards the ocean. And as that river travels across all the different land, it picks up sediment. So, you know, year one, it picks up all the sediment, lays it. Year two is a newer layer of sediment um, in 2011, let's say, lays that down on top of the 2010 layer. In 2012, we have a new layer. And so basically, we have layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of rock um, over time that gets cemented together. So layers at the bottom are the oldest. Layers as you move your way up is going to be the newest. So that brings us to the, one of the most important terms on this page, understanding what relative age is. And relative is relative. It is not an exact absolute date. It is an, a comparison term. So when we talk about the relative age of rocks, we are looking at the approximate age of fossils. You can also look at the approximate age of rocks. We're focusing on fossils in this standard. Um, of course, they would have to be in sedimentary rock layers, and we are comparing those to the ages of other rocks and or fossils. So if we look at the picture to the left, you see three different types of fish fossils. Um, organism C is in the top layer, organism B in the middle layer, and organism A in the bottom layer. So based on the idea of what the law of, of superposition says, that if you have a fossil in the top layer, it is going to be the youngest. So right now, I want you to write the word youngest next to fossil of organism C. Um, and with the law of superposition, it will then say that the fossil of organism A is the oldest because it is on the bottom layer. So I want you to write oldest next to fossil of organism A in the picture. So now we're going to look at some examples of what this means if we're looking at different rock layers um, around the world and looking at some examples here. So the first question that we need to fill in the blank with is which fossil or fossils is going to be the youngest? So I want you to write the word youngest in that blank. And if you look over here at your picture, um, when we're talking about the youngest, remember that we are looking at the top layer of rock, those are going to be the youngest. But you have to be careful because whenever you're looking at top layers, they're not always going to match up. So over here is a top layer on the far left hand side in the middle. In the middle you're going to end up with uh, a top layer that is very, very different. If you look at the types of fossils in the top layer from the left and into the middle, they are different. Um, and then if you look at the top layer over here on the far right hand side, you end up with something completely different than either one of them. So you want to compare your different fossils and see what fossils match up.
okay and those are going to be the rock layers or that are the exact same age so in this case if you look at the key that we are given and then you look at the very top rock layer that doesn't have similar fossils in it what you're actually going to end up with is this um, top picture here on the far right hand side that is going to be a fern so the youngest fossil in this picture is actually going to be a fern on the far right hand picture now question number two is asking us which fossil or fossils is the oldest so I want you to fill in that blank with the word oldest and now we need to look back over here at our picture and determine which one of those is going to be the oldest so the oldest rock layers are always on the bottom um, and since this is the, the middle rock layer is the only one and that has a fossil in it that is going to be the same that is going to be the rock layer that we're talking about for the oldest fossil as well law of superposition says the, the, the farther down your rock layer the older the fossils will be as well so the fossil here is the trilobite okay so what I had realized had not happened was I had not labeled the rock layers A, B, C, D, E, and F so hopefully that will make it a little bit easier as you look at this picture to determine which layers are on the top versus versus which ones are on the bottom. Um, so question number three is now asking us about would the index fossil, so fill in that blank with index fossil, I'm sorry, not the index fossil, would the gastropod be considered an index fossil and why would it be or why wouldn't it be? So if we look over here at what a gastropod is, we're looking at um, this shell-like organism, sort of in that spiral shape. And you can see where the, that is found if you look over on the far left-hand column. It's found in layer B, it's found in layer C, it's found in layer D, and it's found in layer E. Um, because it's found in every single rock layer at all the youngest level and at the oldest level, that would not make a good index fossil. Index fossils, remember, live for a very short period of time. And when you're saying that it lived from the beginning of time to the present day, that doesn't work. So the answer here is no, because it is found in multiple rock layers of different ages, from the oldest to the youngest. Okay, and that's why it would not make a good index fossil. The next question that we have here is um, now, based on the law, the idea of superpositioning, it says use the letters for each rock layer and place them in order from, I want us to place them in order, in order from oldest to youngest. So fill in that blank, oldest to youngest. And then if we look over here and we go back and we think about the law of superposition, basically the le rock layers that are on the bottom are the oldest, and then you work your way up to the top and they get younger and younger and younger and younger. So if we start with the oldest rock layer, that would be letter F, then letter E, D, C, B, and A. Okay. So that should be a good example about how you need to do the next one because this next one I want you to do on your own using the example that I just gave you. So number one, um, let's fill in the blanks so that you will have the information. Which fossil or fossils is going to be the oldest? So write in the word oldest and then I want you to look at the picture here and figure out which layers are, um, are oldest and thus going to be towards the bottom and that's where you will find your oldest fossils. Number two, which fossils or fossil is or are the youngest? So fill in that blank with the word youngest and thus also look at that picture and figure out which of those are going to be your youngest fossils. Remember to look for similarities in your rock layers as to which, lay, uh, which fossils are your youngest and which rock layers are your youngest. Number three, it says there are three sets of rock layers that have the same age. I've given you an example here. Um, if you look at letter G and letter Z, those are the exact same age. They're on the top layers. Um, and if you look at the three types of fossils that exist, you have a plant, you have a bird, and you also have a mammal. That is the exact same set of fossils that is over in letter G. So that means they are the exact same rock layer, 
even though it is a much lower level over on the right hand side in site 2. Okay, So I want you to see if you can find, there are two other sets, I'm just asking you to find one other one. And then number four, what fossil would be a good index fossil? So if you will fill in that blank for me, um, and then find which one, remember, is the only one that is going to be found in a relatively short period of time, so it's typically just found in one rock layer. If you can find that for me, that is the answer to that question. And then finally, last but not least, the question is this. Um, and this question is not on here, so you will need to answer this. Rock layers C and X don't have any fossils in them, if you look over there at the picture in Site 1 and 2. What are some possible reasons? Okay, So think carefully about what that could be and why we wouldn't have that there. And you can look up the key for one uh, example and one reason. And we will talk about some others in class.